Are you taking the Praxis Core Math exam? That is exam code 5733. If so, one of the areas on the test that a lot of students struggle with are questions covering data representation and interpretation, statistics, and probability. Statistics alone can be really scary sounding. But don't worry, we're going to walk through a few practice problems in this video, make you feel a lot more confident when it comes to testing. All right, you ready? Let's jump in. All right, let's look at this one. Look at the following graphic. We can conclude that the bivariate data set shown in this graph represents what? No correlation, dependent variable, independent variable, negative correlation, or positive correlation. So lots of vocabulary here. Don't need to understand all of it, but let's let's talk about a few of these things. Okay, so first of all, bivariate data set. So bivariate is a fancy word, but think about something like a bicycle. Bicycle two by two. So variate just really means variable. So two variable data set, which is what this graph really is, right? So we've got an x-axis down here, a y-axis going up and down, and each one has numbers on it. So it's really two different types of data being graphed here. Now, there's no labels on this graph other than the numbers, so we don't know like what this data is actually representing. I think it'd be easier if we correlated it with something easy to understand. So I'm going to say that this graph represents how happy I am based on watching cat videos on the internet. So really, you know, as we go up and down the y-axis, it's showing the more cat videos I watch. And on the x-axis, it's the happier I get. All right, if that makes sense, let's run with that. So now we need to look at what do the actual data points show, okay? So let's look at these and look at a couple of these data points up close. So if I've watched two cat videos, I'm a one on the happiness scale. So just getting going watching videos, well, not that happy really. Watch a third cat video, I'm up to a two. Okay, there's my first two data points. Third point is over here. So it looks like if I watched four cat videos, I am now a three on the happiness scale. So really kind of hitting that midpoint of happiness. Five gets me a four on the happiness scale. And if I watch six videos, which is, that's a lot of cat videos, uh, then I'm a five on the happiness scale. That's about as high as I can go on this scale that we can see. So what does that mean? What is the, the connection or the correlation between these numbers? So you might have picked up that as I watch more videos, I go higher on the scale. And that is a direct correlation. Okay, you can see here the straight line indicates that there is a correlation. So this no correlation answer, we can toss that one out. But is it a negative correlation or is it a positive correlation? What's the difference between a negative correlation and a positive correlation? So what I like to think about is really just as one number gets bigger, if the other number gets bigger, they're both getting big at the same time. And that's positive. They're moving in harmony. They're moving together. So that is this line representing a positive correlation. Just for the sake of argument, what would a negative correlation look like? A negative correlation would be a line that goes something like this. And just look at maybe a point on that line when I've watched six, so a lot of videos, I'm at a one. But when I've watched two videos, I'm at a five. So really, as one gets bigger, the other gets smaller. That's a negative correlation, okay? But here, because they're moving in tandem, positive correlation, that's our answer. All right, that's that one. All right, let's talk about some horses. The height of horses is measured in a unit called hands, which is often abbreviated to HH. Janet has recorded the height of all of her horses. The bar chart shows how many horses she has in each one HH range. Which of the following is true about the shape of this graph? And then we've got a graph of Janet's horses. Janet has a lot of horses. Okay, the answer choices are, it is bimodal but not symmetric. It is symmetric and bimodal. It is unimodal but not symmetric. Or it is symmetric and unimodal. So some good vocabulary here. We don't have to worry about the hands or the horses. That, that's really irrelevant to the question. What's most relevant is these terms like bimodal, unimodal, and symmetric. Of those terms, symmetric is probably the one you're most familiar with, but let's just make sure. So symmetry 
is really just is something the same on either side of a line. If we draw a line down the middle, is it even on either side? So in this case, let's draw a line right down the middle of this graph, which is roughly here. And let's look on either side. So it's about the same number of data on one side as the left, as the left and the right. Um, no, there's not. You can see there's way more uh, horses that are on the right side of the graph. So this one is not symmetric, which means we can immediately eliminate a couple of these choices. So it's not going to be this one, right? Because that one says symmetric, and it's not going to be this one. So we've already eliminated half of our answer choices, which puts us in a great spot. Now, the only difference between these two is bimodal or unimodal. Okay, so what does that mean? So you might have picked up on bi and uni. Uni usually means one, bi usually means two. And that's the case here. Other part of that term is modal. Modal refers to mode. If you remember mean, median, mode from geometry, that's what we're talking about here. And you might remember that mean means the average, but mode is one that I think people often forget. I like to remember this as thinking about like something is like like pi a la mode. Mode means fashion. It means it means popularity. So when we're talking about a data set. The mode is really just the number that happens the most often. It's the it's the most common number. Okay, so bimodal or unimodal. So unimodal really means there is one peak or one most popular number. Bimodal would be if there's two peaks or two most popular numbers. So a graph that is bimodal would you know kind of go up like this, and then it would kind of go up like this, kind of like two mountain ranges. All right, or two mountains in a range. That is bimodal. Here, though, we only have really one mountain. So that is unimodal. So therefore, that is our answer. This graph is unimodal, but not symmetric. Let's take a look at this problem. So use the following information to answer the question. Okay, we've got this pie graph here with a budget on it. And the question is, if the allocated amount for books is $2,375. Which of the following is the amount allocated for lunch and snacks? All right, so if we look at the graph, we can see that we've got the budget, and we've got a bunch of different parts of the budget. So paper and pens, lunch and snack, printer ink, art materials, and books. Okay, so we're trying to find the amount allocated for lunch and snacks, which looks like the lunch and snacks is this light blue which is over here on the graph, and that's 19%. That's the first challenge of the problem here, is identifying what number, what percent we're trying to find from the graph. So it's 19%. Now, if you go back to the problem, you'll see this number 2375. I think the most common mistake people make with a question like this, because they're trying to move too fast, is to think 2375, that's the whole budget, 19%, that's the part for lunch and snacks, let me get 19% of 2375 and I'm done. You do that though, you're going to miss this important part right before the 2375, which is that that number refers just to the amount for books, not the whole budget. So if we go back to our graph, we can see books is the dark blue here, which is 38%. So 2375 is just 38% of the overall budget, and it doesn't actually directly connect to this lunch and snack portion. So we need to do a little bit of math. All right. So Again, the first thing to do is to interpret the graph, but really this becomes a simple algebra problem. There's a couple different ways to do this. There is a, a formula you can do, but I think it's a little bit hard to remember all these formulas, and sometimes an easier way is just to sort of logically think through it and do the math off of that. And the way I would do this is to set up a couple of ratios, okay? So we know, um, we know that the amount for books is 2375. But what is the whole amount, right? That's what we're trying to find out. So let's set up a ratio where we've got 38, that's the percent for books, over 100, okay? And then we're going to say 2375 over X. And what does that mean? That means 38% is 2375 of something we don't know. And we just solve for x. And if we solve for x, we'll get the whole budget. And if we get the whole budget, we can then take 19% of that, and that's our answer. So to cross multiply, we'll do 38 
times x equals 2375 times 100. Okay, and just as a quick shortcut here, again, remember, you get a calculator on this exam, so you do not need to do this by hand. But that answer is going to be 6250. All right, I use my calculator to do that quickly. So 6250 is our whole budget. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to figure out what of that is the lunch and snacks, which is 19%. So really, that's as simple as going to our calculator and taking 6250 and multiply it by 19%. You can also multiply it by 0.19 if you don't want to quickly find the percent button. If you do that, the answer you're going to get is right down here. $1,187.50. And that's our answer. All right, I hope this was helpful. Remember to like this video and subscribe to our channel. We have a bunch more content to help you get ready for the Praxis Core Math exam. Better yet, check the link below to become a study.com member. As a member, you'll get access to our entire Praxis Core Math exam test prep course. This has all the content review you could possibly want, a bunch of practice questions, as well as full-length practice tests that look just like the real Praxis Core Math exam. So you'll be totally ready for test day. All right, good luck.